Halleluja! Everyone lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we love you. We worship you, Jesus. Your word says we're two or more gather in your name. It's not in the name of Daniel. It's in your name. That you are there in the midst, Father. And Jesus, when you are here, the healer is here. The deliverer is here. The savior of the world is here. So Lord, touch us today. Holy Spirit, we ask for a spirit of revelation and wisdom and the knowledge of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that from the service, we thank you for fresh joy. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. It's a great honor to be here this morning with all of you. I don't know who's more excited, you or me, but it's been an absolute honor to meet your great pastors. Don't you want to give your pastors a big clap? You have some of the greatest pastors, not just in America, but in the world, right over here with you. And really, I don't meet such great people every day. And really, I want to say thank you, pastor. Love you guys so much. And I believe it's the beginning of great friendship. Hallelujah. And just love you all so much, your whole family. So I'm very humbled to be here this morning. And I didn't come alone. Uh, I have a beautiful wife, Bea, and she's a great angel. People say, you know, angels are white. Well, this is my angel. Please stand up, love. Come over here. People say, you know... I've had the privilege of seeing great miracles, the blind see, the deaf hear, but the greatest miracle is when my wife said yes to me. (laughs) I'm a blessed man, and just greet the people, love. Hallelujah. (laughs) Well, good morning. Thank you so much for having us here. We're super excited to meet all of you and to see what the Lord is about to do this morning. We love you. Love you. I'm a blessed man. I, on the way driving here, I realized I forgot my wedding ring. So my wife said to me, listen, are people going to know we're married? I said, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure people know we're married. Hallelujah. <laughs> so she is my wife. And um, <laughs> going on three years, amen. So marriage is a blessing. And we just, we're in love with Jesus, Amen. Since I got saved, I had a radical encounter with Jesus. I was out partying, drinking not the new wine, the old wine, of, the old wine of the world, and I was completely drunk. And at this party, I fell into an open vision, and I was of myself speaking to thousands of people in the African bush about Jesus. And I woke up the next morning, not understanding, you know, what that was about. Because firstly, I know I'm not right with God. I don't even necessarily know what I believe. And at that stage of my life, I was pursuing tennis uh, when I was about 100 pounds lighter. (laughs) But from the age of five, I was playing tennis, age eight, playing nationals, 14. I was actually living just outside Philadelphia here in Pennsylvania, training to play tennis. And 16, I played my first pro tournament. So that's what I wanted to do. And But now with this encounter, I woke up the next morning, and I was so stunned. And it was that night that I had a very powerful encounter with Jesus where I said, Lord, I don't just want to know about you, talk about you, but I want to know you. And from that day, it's been my greatest prayer. Lord, let me fall more in love with you every day of my life. And that's a prayer I still pray today because God isn't just, he's not some religious God. Hallelujah. God is love. And in Christ, we can fall in love with Jesus. Amen. We fall in love with his word. And the Bible says that if we love him, we obey his commandments. So we have to fall in love with God. Amen. Because when you fall in love with God, you see that he, you see his heart for people. Hallelujah. Because God's heart beats for souls. Hallelujah. I walk around a lot, so I hope that's okay. Uh, I thought I was a very energetic man until I met your pastor. Your pastor makes me look 60 years old. 
But I like to walk around to get my calories in. Amen. You know, burn them off and get my steps in. But night after night, I would have dreams of myself speaking to thousands of people in the African bush about the message of Jesus. And that open vision that I had when I, just before I got saved, I couldn't understand it until one day I was on YouTube. Thank the Lord for YouTube. And I came across a man named Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke. And when I saw those campaigns, have anyone seen Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke's campaigns? You know, they're pretty big. It's not house church. Amen. And millions and millions of people. And when I saw that, everything inside of me broke. And I began to cry and shake, saying, that's what I saw in that open vision when I was partying. And from that time, I began to watch all Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke's sermons. Anyone that was doing mass campaigns, Billy Graham, T.L. Osborne, I would follow their lives. I could preach like them. I could say, Africa shall be saved like Reinhardt in the German accent. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then in 2019, I had the, priv the privilege of going to the Rhino Bonkey School of Evangelism. I didn't know that was going to be the last school that he would have before he goes on to be with the Lord, where he would invite a hundred evangelists from all over the world to sit there with him with other great men and women of God. And that year, I was the only African to get in. And from there, I was sitting in Evangelist Rhino Bonkey's office when God spoke to me in my heart, said, go to Kitwe. Now, does anyone know where Kitwe is? Okay, well, neither, neither did I. <laughs> so once again, thank the Lord for Google, the iPhone. So I Googled, where is Kitwe? And I found that it was North Zambia, just below Congo, just below, just below Lumbumbashi. So I realized, well, I'm not sitting in Orlando. I need to come back home and get to Kitwe. So I got back home to South Africa, where we come from, from Cape Town, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And I told everyone, I'm going to Kitwe. People said, what are you going to go do in Kitwe? I don't know. <laughs> but God spoke to me, I have to go. Hallelujah. And because I was in love with him, I wanted to obey him. Amen. Amen. Husbands, if your wife asks you to do something, you're going to do it. Amen. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm not speaking about your mother-in-law. Yeah, do it. Oh, yeah, true. That, that's not bad also, right? But because you love your wife, you will do what she asks you to do. So that it was like that for me. So I went to Kitwe, got there eventually, drove from Cape Town all the way to Kitwe just before the Congo. Took about two weeks almost of driving. And when I got there, I was staying in the community and once again, not knowing anyone, not having even a ministry yet, not having any partners or Facebook friends in Kitwe or Zambia there. And when I got to the community, there was a group of pastors there. So I told them, you know, I'm Daniel, I'm an evangelist, I'm here, I'm, God just told me to come here. And they began to cry. So now I thought, did I say something to offend their culture? So I said, what's wrong? Is everything Okay. They said, no, no, you don't understand. We just finished a 30-day 30 30 fast on water, praying that God would send an evangelist to the city. So, 2019 in February. So from that time, I mean, I never saw myself preaching in Baptist churches, in Reformed churches. God just opened the doors. I was preaching every day. Schools, the, the state, all the universities in, in the state of Kitwe opened up to me to preach the gospel. And from that time, we began to see thousands upon thousands come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And from there, we launched Take the Nations. Hallelujah. And that's the ministry that we run. And right now, since that time, since that encounter, we have now seen 345,000 decisions for Christ. And those are people that are getting plugged into the local church. Hallelujah. Because we're to make disciples. Amen. Working with hundreds of churches, now thousands of churches, going into areas, taking hands. Denominations I never knew existed. But praise the Lord, in Christ there's no denominations. Hallelujah. There's no color in Christ. 
There's no Jew in Christ. There's no Gentile in Christ. Together we are one. Hallelujah. So we're seeing this happen right now in Africa. And evangelist Reinhard Bonk used to say, Africa shall be saved. I've begun saying, Africa is being saved. Amen. And it's the exact same thing for America. People say America shall be saved. I believe America is being saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't believe that the NFL stadiums were just created for football. Hallelujah. I believe that the stadiums of America were created for men and women, for Christians to come together by the thousands to worship Jesus. So this is what I believe is happening in these days we're living in. That's why I'm so excited. That's why I'm so happy. Hee hee. Hee hee. Ha ha. Hallelujah. The Chinese underground church say that joy is the energy of the Holy Spirit. And you can have joy, joy, joy all the time. Because you're only as strong as the joy you have. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So you want to be strong in the Lord? He he. Ha ha. So people said, no, in Africa it won't work. The joy. Africans are, are taught, the African men are, are taught to be very strict and no laughing, no crying. Well, listen. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, because it's in His presence, there's not fullness of mourning, depression, there's joy. So we've seen this all over Africa. Pastors by the hundreds. Catch the fire. Because when you're on fire, you can't sit still. Hallelujah. And when you're on fire and you go through fire, nothing happens. So that's the life we have to live in Christ. Because people told me when I got born again, I mean, I was... When I got saved, I was so radical. I said, if I can live so hard for a lie, for the devil, how much more can I live for the king of kings, the truth that sets a man free? So everywhere I went, when I was even traveling with my tennis, in the plains, I would stand up and preach. Hallelujah. Jesus. Cinemas, go watch a movie. When the movie's done, boop, I'm up. Radical. On fire. People tell me, no, 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 listen, you're going to experience the mountains of life. But the Bible says, you speak to the mountain. Hallelujah. But rather the storms are coming. No, 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 no. Jesus slept in the storm. And when the storm came, he awoke and he rebuked the storm. Hallelujah. So you're not called to live in storms and mountains. You're called to follow him. Hallelujah. And in him there's joy. There's life. And the Bible says that we go from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from victory to victory. So what can you expect? Victory. Glory. Strength. Hallelujah. So that's the life we live. And I'm just excited. Because God is doing a new thing in these days. That's why I love this church. There's a group of people in here that have the fire. They have the word. They're unashamed about Jesus. Hallelujah. And we, this, we're just getting started. I believe in these days there's going to be more mega churches than ever before. People say, what about house churches? House churches, go win souls and you'll become a mega church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the mountain house of the Lord shall be established as the highest and the most important house on the earth. Hallelujah. So even in South Africa where we're living, we're seeing God do great things right now. You know, Africa, South Africa isn't necessarily known as the most righteous nation, <laughs> the most safe nation. But even for us right now, you know, the Bible says, can darkness touch light? No. 
So why are we so afraid of the darkness? When we have lights inside of us, the Bible says when our eyes, when our... When our focus, when our eyes are fixed on Christ, our whole body is flooded with light. And Jesus is the light of the world. And the Bible says it's not Christ in the heavens. It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. So when you step into a situation, it doesn't matter how dark it is. Darkness has to go. It doesn't matter where you are. Greater he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Before I carry on, I have a video. If we can please show one of our videos of our, of our recent campaigns we had last year in Chile La Bombue. I won't let you say it. <laughs> but if we can show a video, then we can carry on. Over 87,000 decisions for Christ in this video. Over four nights. From this day, we speak right now in open heaven over this city, over this nation, Father. Father, we send your angels forth right now to go fetch every person. That it will go all across the nation, across the world, Father, of what you are doing here in Chile La Bombe, Father. We have never had this encounter before, and we can see that people, they are, their expectation is very high. Hallelujah. Africa is being saved. And I believe it's just the beginning. Hallelujah. And we all have a part to play. Because the Bible says that Jesus is building his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. COVID tried, COVID failed. Hallelujah. <laughs> My type of church, amen. <laughs> so we all have a part to play. Whether you're an evangelist, maybe, maybe you're a pastor, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're a son, maybe you're a daughter. We all have a part to play. 
Every single one of us is called to win souls. Everywhere we go, whether we're in the shops, whether we're with our family, our mother-in-law, amen. It doesn't matter who we're with. But life is about Him. It's about loving Him and loving His Word. Above everything. They need to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Hallelujah. You all okay? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Many times I do that, only one or two people say, yeah, we are, we are okay. But it's nice to be in a, in a great, healthy church. Amen. So we need more churches like this in America, in Africa. Hallelujah. And one day I'll get your pastor to come with me in Africa. Praise the Lord. Everyone start fasting again. But we take a mission team for our crusades and have many uh, times, many Americans come along with us and come see what God's doing. Because many times people think today, listen, is God moving still? And I say to you, well, listen, God isn't the great I was. Hallelujah. He's the great I am. He doesn't change. The miracles Jesus did 2,000 years ago, he still does today. In one of our recent campaigns, a mother brought a dead baby girl to our campaign. And on the second night, as we're praying over the sick, I didn't get to lay hands on her, but she brought it to one of our team members in the crowd. And right there in a moment, resurrection life came into that baby girl. <laughs> Hallelujah. The next night, that crusade field was too small. Too small. Because the Bible says that thy people shall be willing in the days of thy power. So how do we get p people willing? The power of God. And Paul said it, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power unto salvation. So we're called to preach Christ. Christ in him crucified. Because the Bible says it's truth that sets a man free. And it's the truth of God's word. Of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago on that cross for you and me. When he said it is finished. The price has been paid. Every curse has been put upon him. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We are made whole. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, I want to know nothing among you except one thing. And that's Christ and Him crucified. You want joy? Get with Him. You want peace? Get Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the secret. He's the answer. How can we be so afraid to hold back the name that is above every other name? No, but this person, what happens if they react? Don't worry. You're free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So if you're free, you're free from people's opinions because you know the one opinion that matters most. And God is love. Love never fails. Hallelujah. His word does not change. That's why we need the word. We need to get in the word. Believe with your heart and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You shall be saved. Hallelujah. So it's not enough to just believe. You have to speak it. You speak it. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. That's what happened with that woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says she heard of a man. And the Bible says Jesus is the word that became flesh. And the Bible says that she, that she realized maybe this is the man. She heard of the miracles, all the things that happened. Maybe these are the, this is the man with all the prophecies that was written about him coming. But there was a belief in her heart, but it didn't stop there. She's spoken out. If only I can touch the hem of his garments. 
I will be healed. And she spoke it and she spoke it. And faith came alive in her. Hallelujah. 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 And when there's faith, you can smile. You can be happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not sad and mopey. Amen. Come, many of you have nice teeth. I want to see the teeth. (laughs) Hallelujah. A lady said to me, well, no, I'm I'm very happy. I said, well, then send the message to your face. (laughs) Hallelujah. Christians are supposed to be the most happy people on earth. Hallelujah. Because we don't serve a dead Jesus. We serve a God that is alive. Hallelujah. A God that has a plan for this nation. A God that set us free. No, but it's such a cost. What cost is it to serve Jesus, the one who took my anxiety? The one who took my depression? The one that gave me life? The Bible says those who lose their life shall find life. The only cost is you have to give up your life. But then you get him. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not looking around to make sure people are smiling. Hallelujah. I was preaching in Uganda and there was a woman sitting in front of me and I said, where's your smile? She looked at me. I said, smile. Where is it? Aren't you happy? She nodded me. I said, smile. I said, smile in Jesus' name. And as she smiled, I realized she did not have any teeth. So I realized now that makes sense. So, amen, there was grace for her. But if you have teeth, you have to smile. Amen. If you don't, go to a dentist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Ah. but there's joy in Christ there's life in Christ if you have your Bibles go to John 2 please That's after Genesis and before Revelation. Amen. It's nice to make people laugh. If you don't like my preaching, I'll keep going with jokes. John 2, verse 1. <laughs> mm. The next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples' mother wait, Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivals. So Jesus' mother told him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our, our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you to do. Standing nearby were six stones, water jars, used for Jewish ceremony washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars have been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the masters of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, Though, of course, the servants knew. He called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best wine until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory. And disciples believed in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, say, he saves the best wine for last. Hallelujah. 
And I believe that's what God's been doing with many of you over here, that he has kept you for such a time as this right now. Many times we want to look back at the, 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 nothing wrong, we love the early church, hallelujah. If it wasn't for the early church, where would we be? But we are living in the last days church right now. And the Bible says that he kept the best wine for last. And you are God's best sitting over here right now. Hallelujah. You are God's best man and woman right now over here. Because I can tell you right now what's happening in the world. That, yeah, okay, well, if you're watching CNN, obviously it doesn't look too good. But you see what's happening in Africa and China, right now in China alone, there's become more new believer converts than even the whole of America. Revival! Because Jesus is coming back very soon. Hallelujah! And I believe God is wanting to do this right now with us in these days. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell, that was only the beginning. Hallelujah. The Bible says there that, that Peter, the one who denied Jesus in front of a girl, stands up right there in front of thousands, preaches the gospel. But he said, this was prophesied in the, by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. I love there, if you go read it in the Amplified or in the King James, you will see there it says, of my spirit. So if I'm to spend time with Pastor Brian right now, I'm to give him of my time. It was only part. It's only part. It doesn't say my spirit. It says of my spirit. Why? Because that was only the beginning. Hallelujah. That was the birthing of the early church. But in these days we're living in right now, it's the last days. And I believe what we're going to see today is the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In fire, in glory. Because he saves the best wine for last. No, but I love the revival in the 1960s. I love when I got touched in the 1970s. We're not living in that time. We need a new move right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He doesn't change. He's not some old Jesus. Because the gospel is not good history. It's good news. And if it's not good news, it's not the gospel. Because when the gospel is preached, it happens. People talk all the time. It's like people have a museum of going to revivals. You know, I've been back there, I've been there, I don't have to go now. Then you don't know Christ, you're not in love with Christ. Because when you get touched by Him, you want more. You want to fast, you want to pray, you want to come to the glory nights. You want to be part. Hallelujah. Because there's always more to Him. Hallelujah. It's nice walking in the back here. Now I can walk behind everyone so no one can see me. I can just sneak attack on people if you're sleeping. <laughs> Hallelujah. The ushers are smiling at me, so praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're about to see great things come. But we as believers, we need to be ready and realize the times we're living in because time is short. We are on the final lap. And more than ever, while we have breath in our lungs, we have to run. Evangelist Ronald Bonke prayed this, Lord, let my mortal hands build the immortal kingdom of God. Lord, let everything I do matter for eternity. Because what you do in this life echoes into eternity. Hallelujah. That's why we have to go after people. Jesus didn't come to destroy America. He came to seek and to save the people of America. Hallelujah. 
And this is what he's doing. This is what he's wanting to do. Africa, Asia, Europe, it doesn't matter where we go. When the gospel is preached, when the fire, say fire. fire. When the Holy Ghost begins touching people. It doesn't matter what culture they come from. It doesn't even necessarily matter what they believe. But when the Holy Ghost begins touching people, He always reveals Jesus. He reveals the Word. Hallelujah. He takes that heart of stone and He gives you a heart of flesh. The greatest of all miracles. Hallelujah. So one day you were not saved, going to hell, living for the devil. The next day, you're new. You're born again. Whiter than snow. Come on, say, I'm more than a conqueror. Because the conqueror lives in me. Say, I'm an overcomer. Because Christ has overcame. Hallelujah. Now you believe in him. Now your eyes are fixed in him, on him. And he's inside of you. Hallelujah. And when he's inside of you, he doesn't just stay like a dam or like a lake. The Bible says in John 7 verse 37, on that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, is anyone thirsty? Let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly, come on, say out of my belly. Put your hand on your belly. Maybe you have a small belly. Maybe you have a big belly. Maybe you need more than one hand to put your hand on your belly. There's just so much glory down there. But out of my belly. Come on, say out of my belly. Shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of life. Rivers of blessing, rivers of miracles, rivers of joy. Hallelujah. So God isn't in you like a dam. He's not in you like a lake. He's in you like a river. And wherever you go, you let that river flow. With your family, that river begins to flow. In the shops, that river begins to flow. When you're with your boss, when you're with your employees, you let that river flow. Hallelujah. And when that river flows, it's life. Life. In the book of Ezekiel, it speaks about the temple and about the river that flowed from the temple. I believe it's 30, Ezekiel 37. 37 or 47? 37? And it speaks about the river that flowed. From the temple and everywhere the Bible says where that river flowed, there was life. And I want to tell you right now, what are you? Are you a temple of the Holy Spirit? And out of you flows a river. So everywhere that river flows is life. There's prosperity. Hallelujah. But we have to let that river flow. We have to let that river bubble up within us. We can't be beavers. Many people have a beaver anointing. I can't use that term in Africa. No one knows what a beaver is. They all think, oh, animal, we eat it, you know. But they want to clog the river. Clog the river. We're not called to clog the river. We're called to let the river flow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You okay? You see, you don't need to have a microphone. You don't need a pulpit. Many people are waiting for a pulpit. Let your life be your pulpit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't have a fancy mic like this and lovely line arrays like this, lovely podium like this. No. He went about doing good, healing all of those that were afflicted. Hallelujah. You have a river inside of you. Hallelujah. 
When I got saved, being young, I didn't necessarily have a microphone, but that's okay. Amen. I used the opportunities I had around me. If you're going to wait until the phone rings, you're going to continue waiting for 10 years. It's not about that. It's about having your eyes fixed on Christ and doing what His Word tells us to do. Hallelujah. It's about being a living sacrifice to the Lord. It's about placing your whole life on the altar so that His fire can come. So that you can be a witness. Too many people want to be witnesses without the power, without the Holy Ghost. And that's why we have Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> I came ready with jokes. We need power. We need fire. We need the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because when a rocket launches up to space, what's at the bottom of the rocket? Fire. Fire. Fuego. And that fire launches that rocket. It propels that rocket. And it's the same thing with us as believers. We as Christians, we need the fire. We need that passion. We need that boldness. But it comes by that fire and it launches us. Hallelujah. How long do I? I still have six more hours. Praise the Lord. Some of you in the back there, your hearts are now beating. What's he talking about six hours? Hallelujah. I went to go minister in Russia at the age of 16. I ministered there for eight hours, 10 hours. People are hungry. People are desperate. People are thirsty for something that's real. And inside of you, you carry that real thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What's so funny? Nothing. <laughs> I didn't even make a joke. Joy. Hallelujah. But there's joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Joy. Joy looks like something. People can see when you're in love. People talk about what they're passionate about. What have you been talking about? Hallelujah. I walk through the shops here. I see, a, I see some ladies there. Ah, oh, did you just buy that? Do you like my dress over here? You can hear them talking because they, they're passionate about shopping. <laughs> so when you're passionate about Christ and His Word, it just flows. It comes out of you. Yeah. Then it becomes easy to speak to someone about Christ. It becomes easy for me to stand up here in front of you because now I don't pray to preach. I pray to know Him. I pray to know His words. Because I love Him. I don't use God. I love Him. He's my King. He's my Lord. I want to know Him more. I want to know Him by His words. Hallelujah. So then everywhere I go, the river just comes out. You can wake me up at 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. Maybe I'll look a bit tired, you know, but give, give me the mic. It's easy for me to speak because I love him. Are you hearing me? And we fly a lot. We fly a lot. We flew last year to here to the U.S. eight times from Cape Town. And each flight's about 35 hours of traveling. One way to come from Cape Town to the U.S. And we did that eight times, return trips. And as you go through, as you're about to go through TSA, you know, you see, all the, you see the loved ones saying bye to one another. You know what I'm talking about? 
That's why you say bye because you can't go with t- into TSA. You'll get in trouble. And there you see a couple. And right there in front of everybody, they now give a big hug. And all of a sudden, they begin to kiss. And when I mean they begin to kiss, they begin to kiss for one minute. And that one minute turns into two minutes. Now that, that kiss begins to turn into three minutes. And they ain't stopping because they love each other. And they don't care who's around them. In the public. I'm like, leave, close, your, be a, close your eyes. You know? <laughs> holy, holy. You know? And there they're supposed to be saying goodbye. Now they've turned into a, a little kissing session. <laughs> but they don't care who's around them. So they love each other. It's the same thing with Christ when we love Him. We don't care who's around us. Hallelujah. Your pastor is just as loud as he is here in Starbucks. (laughs) Just as passionate as he is in church, he's also in Starbucks. Wherever he goes, hallelujah. And you realize it's not about then religion, but it's relationship. It's a life laid down to Christ. Because he laid down his life so he could get everything of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I believe many of you today in this place, you know, it's so easy to come to church, listen to the word, but then go back exactly the same. And we have to be careful as believers to become numb to the things of God. Do you still love the Lord? Like you loved Him when you just got saved. More, praise the Lord. Do you still cry when you go through the Gospels? When you read the Word, Lord, thank you for this revelation. Wow! Or is it just, nah, doing my duties, reading my Bible? Because it's easy to fall into that place. So we need to constantly make sure our hearts are pure before the Lord. Because the Bible says in Matthew 5, Blessed are those who have a pure heart. For they shall see God. So who wants to see God? So we need a pure heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. So if your heart is pure, you'll come out of you. Hallelujah. When you squeeze an orange, what comes out of an orange? Orange juice. So it would be very weird to squeeze a Christian and everything but Jesus comes out of them. If I squeeze an apple and grape juice comes out, that's a rotten apple. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise the Lord. There's something wrong with that apple. I ain't eating it. So we need to make sure with our lives before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks about Luke in Luke 9 when the disciple spoke to Jesus and said, Jesus, teacher, I want to follow you. Jesus says, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere, no place, nowhere to lay his head. Then he says, teacher, I want to follow you. But first, let me go bury my father. But first, let me go bury my father. And Jesus responds, let the dead bury the dead. Follow me. 
And I was thinking, what is wrong with that? Because, you know, if you don't want to go bury your father, you have issues. And I saw those two words, but first. But first, Jesus. Jesus speaks to us, Lord, you know, go there, do that. No, but, but first, Jesus, I want to do this. But first. And we can't afford to have a but first life with Jesus. We can't afford to have a but first life with our Christianity. But first, but first. No. He needs to be first place. He needs to be our first love. Hallelujah. It's not time to be lukewarm. You need to be blazing. On fire. Hallelujah. For the things of God. That passion. Because when you're passionate, people can see you're passionate. People can see when you're in love. When you have life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No, but first. No, 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 no. There's no but first with Jesus. He calls you. Hallelujah. The Bible doesn't say tomorrow is a day of salvation. It doesn't say next year is a day of salvation. But many people treat it like that today. I meet people all the time. No. You know, I want to first have money. I want to, I want to go through college first. Then I'll follow Jesus. No. The Bible says now's the day of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. And so many people are sitting in hell right now because they had a but first to Jesus. They thought they could say yes to Jesus one day instead of right now. Instead of right now laying down their life completely. Hallelujah. You guys okay? Yeah. I'm seeing more teeth. That's a good thing. You have a beautiful smile. Hallelujah. We need to be radical. Because he saved the best for last. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why God has kept you and placed you, you right now over here on this earth for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Because He loves you. And He has a plan for you. He has a plan for this nation. This nation is not going down. God loves America. He loves the people of America. He loves this nation. He has a plan for the people. Hallelujah. Because people told me as an African, you know, are you going to come to America? You know how hard the people of America are. Ish. So I I began to become nervous. I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? But when I got here, I realized the people are the nicest people in the world. They love their nation. They're proud of their nation. Hallelujah. They love God. And on meetings. Same meetings we had in Africa. The miracles. Happening in America. The joy. I know you guys are a bunch of joyful people. People say, no, but the joy won't work in America. Well... It's working here. (laughs) Hallelujah. God's not subject to nations. Hallelujah. He's just looking for people that will grab a hold of his word. That will grab a hold of him by faith. That will stand up. That will will call on his name. That will cry out for more. Lord, send your fire. Touch me. Do a work in me. And you don't have to wait for a move because then you become the move. Amen. Hallelujah. Because when you've encountered Jesus, you become an encounter for someone else. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, send someone. He has you. He's called you. He's chosen you. All you have to do is say yes. Because the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. And how you get chosen, you say yes. No, but first, yes. We don't give Jesus attitude, amen? We give him our lives. We surrender our lives to him. Because that's what he did for us. The Bible says God demonstrated, his lo- God demonstrated his love by Jesus coming and dying for us. And it wasn't just his hand on the cross or his pinky or his foot. No. It was his whole life on that cross for you and I so that we could come back, that we can give him everything. Hallelujah. That we can be redeemed. That we don't just have to sing, my Redeemer lives, but it actually becomes a reality. Because before I was really lost, now I'm really found. Before I was in darkness, now he's brought me into his marvelous lights. Now he sees me holy. He sees me blameless. Now I have, I have righteousness, right standing with God. Because of the blood of Jesus. He doesn't just wash you gray, wash you a little muddy. No! Whiter than snow. He doesn't no longer see your sin in Christ. Hallelujah. And no longer an orphan, but a son, but a daughter. Amen. And now you've been accepted by God. Now you will never be rejected by people. Now I struggle with the spirit of rejection. Realize that you are accepted by Christ. Hallelujah. Let the truth of God's word set you free. It's not feelings that set a man free. It's not motivational talks that set a man free. It may leave you good for a night, but the next day you will still struggle with the same sins. It's about coming to Christ. Pulling pulling off the old man and pulling on Christ. It's about surrendering everything to him and holding nothing back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then grace becomes an empowerment. It empowers you to be righteous, to be holy. It doesn't become an excuse to sin. That's what people teach today. But not this pastor, not this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why people are stuck in the same sins. They don't know the truth of the word. They don't know what God did for us once and for all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says that these signs shall follow those that believe. Believe what? They was bruised for iniquities. They was wounded for our transgressions. That Christ paid it all. Hallelujah, that we are free, that we're no longer carrying baggage, no longer carrying old things. It doesn't matter what you've come in with in a moment. When you come to Christ, when you surrender your life, you begin to smile again. You see life. Because a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
But God came, Christ came, so you might have life. Hallelujah. Life. And life doesn't begin one day. Oh, only when I get to heaven. Then I'll experience true healing. Then I'll experience true life. No, 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 no. When you come to Jesus, right now, you receive life. Right now, you receive healing. Right now, you receive freedom. Hallelujah. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit is... (laughs) He can't deal with unholy spirits. Praise the Lord. But Daniel, what about all the demons? Oh, the demons. All those principalities, you know, you go into. What about them? Darkness can't touch light. We were having a campaign and seven satanic priests came to one of our our crusades. You know, (laughs) the witches don't really like what we do. And many times they come to the meetings to try to curse the meeting or cause disruptions. And, you know, they end up getting saved. Hallelujah. So in this specific time, we had a crusade and it was the final night. And seven satanic witches came, priests, to the crusade. And they came to kill the worship team that we had. And right there, one by one. They got on their knees. They gave Jesus their lives. And my wife, you led them, they led them all to the Lord. So we deal with that all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fear. That's why I can look at a witch in her eyes and say, come out. Because we have the authority. We have the power. And the devil's under our feet. Hallelujah. The devil's been defeated. Amen. But we have to stand up. We have to preach. We have to open our mouths and believe the word, what he says about us. I have four more hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the price has been paid. And it's up to us to now believe it and to walk it out. Amen then like I said, you can live like this every day. Happy. Joyful. Hee hee. Ha ha. When you're with your mother-in-law. Hee hee. Ha ha. When you're with your boss. Hee hee. Ha ha. You can live like this everywhere. With your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. No, but I just had a really bad day. We create excuses because we allow our circumstances. To mean more than what Jesus did for us once and for all. But did you see how they treated me? Did you see how they treated Jesus? And even on those days, he still loved us. The Bible says that you were the joy set before him. It gave him joy knowing that you will come back because of the price that will be paid. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
You look 10 years younger with that lovely smile, sir. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Just receive from Him right now. Come on, receive His presence. Receive His joy. Those who are struggling with migraines, even right now, that migraines begin to leave you right now. That smelling condition leaves you right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now say hee hee. <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> hee hee. <laughs> ha ha. Oh, but church was so happy. Yes! People were really happy in church. I know! Hallelujah. We serve a good father. A good father who loves us. who will give us everything that we ask Him for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe Evangelist Jonathan Shuttleworth said this, we don't serve a prayer hearing God, we serve a prayer answering God. Yeah. Hallelujah. A God that's not on holiday, a God that's not sleeping, but a God that hears our prayers, that loves us, a loving God, a loving Savior. That is real. Hallelujah. Because we're two or more gathering. There's more than two people in this room. That gather in His name. He's there in the midst. We have to grab hold of it by faith. The miracles. Joy. Deliverance flows. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want everyone to close their eyes. No one looking around. Don't look to your neighbor. It's a holy moment. If you're here today, this morning, and you know you haven't been, you haven't been living all out for God, maybe you feel numb and things aren't where they used to be. And you're on fire at a stage, loving the things of God, but it just does not feel the same. Maybe you're here and you've never called on the name of the Lord. Maybe you haven't made Jesus. You haven't given Him your life. 
Maybe you're here and you even have a but first attitude towards the Lord. The Lord's called you to do things, spoken to you. And you respond, but first, Jesus. And you know today's the day that you need to respond. You can't have another but first with Jesus. He loves you. And if you're here right now and you know, I need to surrender. While eyes are closed, no one looking around, can I please see your hand? I would love to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the back, in the front. Lift your hand. Don't worry about those around you. You're not going to stand before your neighbor one day. You're going to stand before Jesus. So if that's you, lift your hand. Don't let this moment go. This is why this church is here. This is why we do what we do. Is because he loves you. Don't let this opportunity go to waste. If your heart is beating, that's not bad pizza. That's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Lift it. Now I want those hands that are raised to stand up where you are right now. Don't worry about those around you. Stand. Make a stand for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come, if the Lord is tugging on your heart, stand. Now, I want those people that have stood right now to come forward. Come. Come out of your seats. Come. Come. a holy moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everyone to stand and I want you to stretch your hands forward because this is why we had the service. And I want those in front right to lift your hands to heaven. That's where your help comes from. You're not calling on evangelist Daniel or Pastor Brian. You're calling on Jesus. He's the one that makes you whole. He's the one that paid the price. And I want you to repeat after me this prayer. And I want you to mean it with all your heart. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life. I give you everything. Jesus, wash me with your blood. Jesus, I believe that you died for me. And that you were raised up for me. This morning, I put my faith in you. Thank you, Jesus, that I can love you. Because you first loved me. Amen. Now keep your hands raised. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless every person in front. In the name of Jesus, I come against every addiction every sin in the mighty name of Jesus that's broken off you off this day I declare over your people they are righteous they are holy that even from today they will remember this and Lord put that fire even right now upon your people to run to run for you Lord now just keep your hands raised and everyone just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost just begin to pray where you are right now. Lift your hands and receive where you are. Fire right now. Just receive where you are. Fire right now.
Come on, receive where you are. Fire. He gives you a new body. In the name of Jesus. on someone's getting a knee healing right now receive it right now in your knee your hands, close your eyes. In Jesus' name. Save them. Come lift your hands, close your eyes. Sorry. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Fire right now. Close your eyes. You've been faithful, the Lord says. It's going to reward you. Fire right now. <laughs> Lift your hands. Close your eyes, Asha. One hand in your belly, one hand to heaven. Father, I bless every person here in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for that river, that river of joy, that river of life, that river of the Holy Ghost and fire. That from this day there will be conscience of that river. That flows from them. Now say thank you Jesus. That I have a river. Not a lake, but a river inside of me. Thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price. From this day, I let the river flow. Everywhere I go, that river flows. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.